If you want to learn how to become a professor in the field of political science, stay with me. Hello and welcome to howtobecomeaprofessor.com, the web show to learn from proven professors and experts. I'm your host Stefan and today you will learn how Gary King, university professor at Harvard, would plan his career in the field of political science today. Professor Gary King is the Albert J. Weatherhead University Professor at Harvard University, one of 23 with the title of University Professor, Harvard's most distinguished faculty position. Gary King develops and applies empirical methods in many areas of social, social science research, focusing on innovations that span the range from statistical theory to practical application. Gary received a BA from State University of New York at New Paltz and a PhD from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And Gary King has been elected fellow in six honorary societies and has won more than 30 best of awards for his work, including the Career Achievement Award in 2010. Professor Gary King, thank you very much for taking your time for this interview. Uh, it's a tremendous honor to have you here with us. Oh, thanks very much. All right. I know that you're very busy, so let's dive right into the content. Um, the first question I'd like to ask you is, how would you plan your academic career in the field of political science today from a BA degree to professorship? And if it's possible, please be as specific as you can. So the most important thing to remember is that if you, the student, did exactly what I did and you followed every step that I followed, you wouldn't do anywhere near as well as I did. <laughs> And that's because I already did it, right? right? So, so what you need to do is to cut your own path. You need to find a skill that others don't have. You need to, you need to um, read some things that others don't know. You need to have some ideas that hadn't been, uh, had, hadn't, uh, others thought. hadn't figured out before. Right. Um, uh, you can take the advice from everybody, but everybody, including me, is going to give you advice about what we did and mm -hmm. what was successful for us. But the field moves forward. It continues to move forward. Uh, the, the technical skills that I had early on were certainly good enough to get where, 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 where I was going then. Um, but the technical skills I would need today are, are, um, are, have moved on. And there are different types of skills. And so uh, learning the basic statistical skills were, were, were very valu valuable. Um, today, you definitely want to learn the basic statistical skills. But you also need some computer science. That would also be very valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, and so do that, you know, learn all of those things. And then also figure out what the next really cool thing is that I don't know and, and my colleagues don't know and come and teach us. Okay, okay. Um, no, I have one question regarding the requirement, the requirement process uh, of technical skills. I mean, you know, I personally feel also kind of overwhelmed. There are so many different skills, and if you want to become proficient in statistics and other quantitative methods, um, is there a more efficient way to learn those skills? Yeah, uh, let me let me actually make it worse before I make it better. So the way to make it worse is just to understand how bad the problem is. Uh, if you actually did it in the way that would be logical and would would make intellectual sense you would take a few years of, maybe you'd take three or four years of mathematics and then take mathematical statistics and linear algebra and real number theory and, and then take your first data analysis course and then maybe a little social science. Right. But by that time, you'd probably be a physicist or a chemist or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, that doesn't work. Even though that, makes, that may make the most intellectual sense, it, it, just, it, it just doesn't work for a social scientist. And so what, what we tend to do and what, what often makes sense is, sure, get the background, get the tools, pick up the tools when you can. Uh, they're, very, they're very important. Um, but, but, what, but what you want to do is also learn the substance at the same time. And so what we tend to do is, uh, that, and what tends to work the best, is to get the tools when you need them. Right? When you need them, pick up the tool as fast as you can uh, and go as deep as you can. Um, another, another general suggestion is um, most academics tend to use the same methods uh, their whole career. And they're the methods that they learned in graduate school. And so don't be like them, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you, you know, I mean, that's the first, first suggestion. Don't be like them. Keep learning tools. But the second suggestion is to realize, that, realize the social science generalization that people are who they are. 
and uh, people tend to be the same, and you're probably going to be like them. And so what that means is when you're in graduate school or you're an undergraduate, pick up the tools, because the tools will enable you to do things that others haven't been able to do. So if you have the choice, take some statistics courses, take, take some courses in political methodology, take, take a computer science course or two now, um, and, uh, and, and then you'll have a framework on which to build. And then you can prove me wrong after you, after you become a professor and, and you can learn, learn more tools. But, the, but the, uh, those tools will be taken to the next level. All right. Thank you so much. Let's move on to the second question quick. What are, in your opinion, the most relevant journals to submit your or original work to and which are the most important conferences to attend in the field of political science? So political science is a very big, broad, diverse field. Mm -hmm. And there's people that study all kinds of different things within it. And so we have many, many journals that you might focus on. Uh, the, the, the main journal of the American Political Science Association is the American Political Science Review. And so that would be a good journal to pay attention to, to understand what the field's about. Um, but there's many, many really good specialized journals. Um, political analysis is, is the main journal of the method subfield of the discipline. It's cited more often than all the other journals in the, in the field because so many people use these tools. So that's another good journal to pay attention to. Um, there's regional journals uh, in political science, the American Journal of Political Science, the Journal of Politics. Uh, and then there's specialty journals um, within particular areas, uh, International Studies Quarterly, Journal of Conflict Resolution, and a number of others within specific areas, uh, American politics um, uh, research. Um, uh, and so there's many, many others. Um, but I think you could start with those to, to, get, to get a feel for it. On conferences, um, the way to think about it is that there are some big conferences that many, many people go to. So the American Political Science Association meetings that tend to be at the end of the summer every year. Uh, um, that has maybe 6,000 people go to it. Uh, it's a big political and social event with, uh, with hundreds of panels. Um, uh, that's, those, are, those are interesting. The Midwest Political Science Association is a smaller version of that national conference. That's also a, a useful thing to do. But I would also go all the way to the other end of the continuum and look for some small conferences on areas that you're interested in. So the Society for Political Methodology is a smaller conference with now about 200, 250 people maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's even smaller conferences with a dozen or a few dozen people that, are, that can be very, very valuable. All right, okay. Um, yeah, we've reached the last question. Um, how have you been able to maintain such a high level of motivation and discipline throughout your entire and impressive career? And how can young scholars avoid the feeling of overwhelm? Well, it's more, it's, it's not being overwhelmed, it's more uh, what it is you want to do and why it is you would want to be in the field. Right. Uh, <clears throat> I, I remember when I was a sophomore in college, uh, my, my, uh, it, it, my advisor had me doing some research for him. So I was working as a research assistant, like an apprentice. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was literally copying numbers out of a book into columns, and then I'd type them into the computer. And, uh, and um, uh, I would take these and I'd do some analyses on my own. And at one point I did a little uh, analysis on my own, a little scatter plot. And I brought it to him and I said, it looks like these two variables are related to each other. You think that might be interesting? And he said to me, um, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. And I was a sophomore in college. And I thought, you didn't know that? How could you not know that? And he said, he said uh, Gary, I don't know that. And nor does anyone else on the planet in the history of the world. No one ever knew this before. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, it was some silly little thing that I came up with as a sophomore. But it's not that hard to come up with an idea that and, a, and an empirical analysis that nobody else in the history of the world has ever come up with before. And once you think about that, and once you do it, it's like cocaine. Well, I don't know exactly what cocaine <laughs> is like to take, but it's like the way they describe it. It's completely addictive. Right. And, and, it's, and once you do it, you just want to keep doing it. You just want to make those discoveries. You just want to be part of it. And so you don't need to worry about motivation if it's something that you're really interested in. So that's, I think, the answer to your question. <laughs> okay, let's wrap Let's uh, wrap this up very fast, but still very substantial interview. So first, uh, Gary, Professor Gary King, 
um, yeah, explained that it's really important to come up with something very original and uh, to learn the techniques and uh, yeah, mathematical techniques, computer science techniques on, along the way as you need them. Second selection, uh, Gary King shared with us what are in his opinion the most relevant journals to submit your original work to and which are the most important conferences to attend in the field of political science, which is a very diverse, a very broad field. And uh, stakes, Gary, Professor Gary King generously told us how he has been maintaining such a high level of, of motivation and discipline throughout his distinguished career. Professor Gary King, thank you so much for contributing so much value to the Online School for Unconventional Academics. We learned so much that, uh, and we learned uh, so many actionable steps and I'm sure that many of our users will put your recommendations into good use. This interview was by far the fastest <laughs> so far. And uh, as always, I'd like to end my interview with following quote, the best advice is worth nothing if it's not put into practice. Mm -hmm.